Praise the Lord, everybody. I hope everybody is well. I pray on today, guys, that you have gotten everything that God has for you on today. I pray that today was a day that was, that you found to be useful, that God used you in a mighty way to help somebody, to help somebody, to tell somebody, to tell somebody all about Jesus and his goodness. Right, guys? <laughs> all right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and read something to you guys that's, um, that kind of stuck out to me today. And it's very important because a lot of times, a lot of times we want Savior, but we don't want this part, the most important part. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead and read it. I'm coming from Luke chapter 9 and 23, and I'm going to stop at verse 27, okay? Watch this. Then he said to them all, If anyone wants to follow me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily. Hold on, let me repeat that. Then he said to them all, If anyone wants to follow me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily. Let me repeat that again. Then he said to them all, If anyone wants to follow after me, let him take up his... Let him deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life because of me will be saved. For what does it benefit if someone, if someone, if he gains the whole world and yet loses him, his soul? For whoever is ashamed of me and my words, the Son of Man will be ashamed of him when he comes in his glory and that of the Father and the holy angels. Truly I tell you that there are some standing here who will not taste death, until they see the kingdom of God. And I'm reading from the um, Christ, Christian um, Standard um, Bible. Watch this. Jesus said, this is what he said. I didn't say it. He said to them, if anyone wants to follow me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow him daily. What does it mean to deny yourself? Here's what I found out, God. When you are in a place with God, and I'm not talking to unbelievers, I'm talking to believers. He says, take up your cross and follow him. He says to deny yourself. When you are denying yourself, you are coming to the knowledge and understanding of who God is. Because you realize that in a day, that there is something that God requires out of you. I'm going somewhere with this, okay? You realize that when you're denying yourself, in spite of how your flesh may feel, in spite of what your mindset is telling you, in spite of your ego or position when you are denying yourself you're doing everything that god requires out of you you realize it's not about self it's not about flesh it's not about my spirit but it's but what god requires of me he said i have to deny myself what does it mean to deny yourself when you're denying yourself that means you're coming to the knowledge not only of who god is but you're allowing him permission to rest and reside in you you're allowing him to abide in you. So when he abides in you, then you can begin to, begin to abide in him. So then now you become one. Let somebody say the power of one. Okay? When you're following him, you're not following him and you're saying, you know what, I want to do this with my life today. I want to do this. You're asking God, God, what is, it, what is it that you have for me to do on this day? What is your purpose for my life on today? A lot of times when we get up in the morning, we ask God, you know, Lord, I want this or I want this. God bless me or bless this. And that's fine. You're supposed to do that. But have we ever really taken the time to understand or to even ask God, 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 you're going to say, what is it that you have me to do? Help me to deny myself and what I want, my will, God, and let your will be done. Let your judgment be done in my life one today, God. Remove age out the way. Remove self out the way. Remove carnality out the way, God, and let me feed off your spirit, God. Who do you want me to talk to today? Who is it that you want me to call? Who is it that you need me to go for? Send me that one, God. If it's a crackhead, send me, God. If it's a prostitute, Lord, send them to me. Send that one. If you're asking me to get something, God, even though I, I don't know where I'm going to get it from, God, give me the resources. Give me understanding, God. Help me to deny myself, God, so that your will and judgment can be done in my life. That's very important, guys. When you're following Christ and when you're truly carrying your cross, you realize it's not about you no more. Actually, it was never about us from the beginning. It was always about Christ. You see, when he was here, he had one purpose. He wasn't called in politics. He wasn't called in this, that, this, and that. He was not. He had one purpose, and that was to get to the cross. He knew there was power in carrying it. He knew that if he, if he stopped carrying it, then we wouldn't even have eternal life now. But because of his grace and his love and his mercy and all of who he was and all of who he still is, 
he knew that something great was going to come out of carrying it. So he knew it was power. There was power in the blood. There's still power in the blood. His blood still heals. His blood still demonstrates and orchestrates and shows exactly who God is. But a lot of times, many of us can't comprehend that because a lot of times we allow the religious spirit to comprehend and think for us. What is a religious spirit? What am I saying? A religious spirit is often one who, are, who operates according to tradition or a mindset. It's often looked at as an outer appearance rather than seeing a person's heart for what God is trying to do. It's often looked at that I'm better than you. And because I've got baptized five times in the Holy Ghost and, and, and speaking in tongues now, that I'm better, or because I'm sitting up here in a position that I'm better. That's a religious spirit. A religious spirit op operates in a place where they only have a one-track mind. They can only see what they want to see. They stay in the New Old Testament, but they never want to taste the new wine of what God is doing. That's a religious spirit. you got to be mindful. A religious spirit is often demonically influenced. It's often characterized or used because of uh, maybe things that happened from your childhood or certain afflictions. So now this thing kind of takes over you and it tells you how you're supposed to be. And it's more concerned about works and out appearance than doing things try to try to get in rather than doing what God asks them to. A religious spirit never really gets down and dirty. They're often dressed up and made up in a way to where you can't see past the out of appearance because they look so pretty and they made up. A religious spirit will never have this on or a hoodie on. You know why? Because they automatically say, oh, that's worldly. Because they're not even looking at the heart or can't even see what God is trying to do. But because they're so religious, they can't get past self. So they never take the time to truly carry their cross because they feel like, oh, man, it's too hard. This is too hard. But let me tell you something. There is so much power in carrying your cross. When you learn to get past self, when you get to a place and say it's not about me, but it's all about him and what he asks me to do and requires out of me, you got to get past self. You got to get past self. You got to get past the walls of the church. Too many of us have become complacent to where we are. We can't even see what God is doing because all we're doing is give me God. God bless me with this, bless me with that, bless me with that. Too many of us are actually scared to get on out, out, outside, outside the walls of church. Too many, how many of you will really go out to the projects and, and, and projects and pray and stuff like that? Many of us wouldn't. We probably wouldn't. Because we're too scared. Because we're scared we're going to get dirty. We're too scared. That mindset. we got to get out that mindset, folks. Let me read that again for you. Because I don't think nobody heard me just now. Then he said to them all, if anyone wants to follow me, let him deny himself, pick up his cross daily, and follow me. Take it up your cross daily. You have to take up your cross daily. Not just on Sunday, not just on Wednesday. Your cross must be carried daily. I'm going to tell you something. When you find out who you really are with God, a lot of times you'll find yourself alone. When you're really walking with God, let me tell you how many friends you're going to have. Probably less than two. If you have one at that, pick up your cross and follow him. Deny yourself daily and follow him. Whatever God tells you to do, don't allow the religious spirit or carnality to blind you. Because I'm going to tell you something. The very ones that think they might make it in because they've been in church all their lives and singing up here and doing this and doing that and going to feet, you better be careful. Be very careful and mindful. That's why it's very important when you pray. To make sure you ask God to expose anything that's on the inside of you that's not like him. Because a lot of us are wicked. A lot of people got some wicked stuff in them. Sitting up in the church. Wicked. Quick to judge because of an out of appearance. Quick to judge because people don't look like you. You better be careful. Because I'm going to tell you something. That might just be the person. That might just be the person who your healing may go, come through. Who your deliverance may come You never know who God may use. Be very mindful. Be very mindful. Understand what it means to carry your cross. Pick up your cross and follow after Christ. Deny yourself. Don't let the outward appearance taint your mind and thinking. 
Because what happens, you can get in the state of, of repeating things. It becomes repetition. Okay, I got to do this. Prayer at this time. This at this time. This at this time. Got to sing at this time. It becomes a form of godliness. God is not looking for no form of godliness, man. He's not looking for that. And as real as I can put it, listen. Get to know God for yourself. Get in that word for yourself. There's no sense of reading this thing every day if change is not coming forth. Don't just stay in the Old Testament. Get in the New Testament. Many of us want the old wine. God is trying to do something new. Get in this word for yourself, okay? But that's all I want to say. God gave me that word on today, guys, and I just kind of wanted just to... You want to say something? I'm talking about, I came from Luke 9 and 23, and I'm talking about something the Lord had on my spirit on today, and that's about pretty much carry a cross. What does it mean to carry a cross? Because a lot of times we can carry our cross, but we carry it in religious. We think we're carrying our cross, but really we're carrying religion. And religion is not going to do it. God is not looking for religion. Hey, everybody. Um, uh, well, I'm walking in on something. Um, I'm actually just coming uh, from walking with the Lord and praying and praying for the nation, community, neighbors, family, brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, just heard the last little end of what my wife was sharing that probably was placed on her heart. Um, one of the things that I've, I've always mentioned, kind of just touched up stuff that we know everybody's not perfect. Um, but this is one of the things dealing with the Holy Spirit. He's a help. we we got to remember he's this help. And he uses different people to help. Uh, some people got, he uses for the gift of administration. Uh, some of it could be for intercessory. And, and some people might say, well, I don't want that type of help. And, and, you know, that's the part where, you know, you have to come to that place of get out of that religious way of thinking. Uh, because sometimes self has always been the problem. There's always been the problem. And God is trying to find vessels to use. Even if there's place in the body of Christ to uh, take the body where it needs to be. It's not that we as individuals or others that are out there are the ones that's doing it. It's the Holy Spirit that is doing it. Uh, one thing I heard my wife mention as I came in, um, I just caught that last in, uh, something I always talk about, the new wine and old wine. You know, there's different vessels. And I think if you listen to the uh, video I made dealing about, um, uh, what was it, um, exposing certain things, generational stuff. You know, you, some people have old wine, and they like old wine. They very do like old wine. But the thing is, and old wine's good, but sometimes you can't take old wine and put it into new vessels. Uh, if I like, if you want to say Kool-Aid a certain way, and I've been drinking it so long, um, they might have a different brand out here, and I might not want it. But it, it is good because it was there, it was used, and it fortified whatever somebody needed and their desire was, and it was needed at that time. But you can't take that old way of thinking into a new way of thinking. And uh, new wine sometimes... Hey, it probably is good. I'm pretty sure it is good if God has created something new. Uh, but dealing with that area, you got a lot of people say, oh, this new generation, uh, and I'm not a new generation. Um, I'm, I'm well 50 and over. So some people uh, think the new generation, but no, it's about change. But some people, if you don't, if you're in a, a position when you like to, oh, God can use whatever he has. You know, it, it, it brings forth a foundation. But the thing is, you got to give it an opportunity for new to go forward. You know, he did say in his word that uh, you can't take an old piece of cloth and add it to a new piece of cloth. And many, even young people, new generation as well as old generation, know this. Because if something is old, uh, it's, been, it's pretty much been worn out. Think of the word I said. It's been worn out out eventually it's going to rip if you put it to a new piece of cloth uh mindset don't want to accept new things i think i told show some people the other day that you know i'm still learning how to work a computer now <laughs> uh, i still have a flip phone running the business that i have 
I'm learning a little bit as I go. But I have to still adjust my mindset to something that is new, that is changing. I don't have to go with science. But what I'm trying to say is the way we've been doing things ain't supposed to go on forever and ever. God is a changing God. It's like he says his mercies are new today. They say they knew. They ain't say they were the same mercies from yesterday. New today. The mindset. So that's basically all I want to say. If you can kind of get that. You know, God is still working. He's still trying to change some things. The other enemy is being busy too. And sometimes you can get stuck where you're at. Because like I said before. Tradition. Tradition was Jesus' greatest probably challenge that he had. Um, he said because of that tradition and some other things he said. It made the word of God of no effect. Some people look like they know everything. Theologians went to class, school. There's organizations out there who swear they have the right doctrine. But yet they don't even live it. And that's to whosoever. And I don't mean to sound harsh. I don't see, to seem to sound mean about something. But examine yourself. I've seen doctrines, read doctrines of different many backgrounds and organizations. I don't care if you're Kojic. I don't care if you're uh, St. Peter's. I don't care if you're evangelical or whatever. And it's not to persecute the church. I'm saying somewhere along the road, somebody stopped falling. They just took something. And I said this one more time before. And man has not continued to follow Jesus. They took certain things out. To say, you know, this is how we go about it. But I'm telling you, there's, there's more. There's much more. Jesus said, I came to give life. And life more abundantly. Some people want to just take some of the things that he gave in life. Maybe through the Old Testament. But he came to give a better and a new covenant. Read it in he the book of Hebrews. Read it in the book of Hebrews. How he came to bring a better promise. Some people are fallen people that are blind. And they're falling right in the same ditch, the same boat that they're falling in. And they've been falling in because this pastor, and that, meant, that pastor meant well for that time. And sometimes there was times where people didn't have the word of God. And they were ignorant. So they preached the way they could preach, talk the way they could talk. i give you a prime example. And this is, I'm going to finish with what I have to say. Um, when you look at certain uh Laws and rules that was back in Moses time And then you look at maybe David and Saul He was a king Saul was a king How could a person who committed adultery Become king But then you had all these rules and regulations thou shalt not and thou shalt not and thou shalt not I'm not bringing confusion But I'm only speaking because God is dealing with a situation now Today, there are 600 and some odd rules and laws that were back then, maybe in Moses' time. And most of the time, most people only pull out one law. Most of the time, that you hear today, dealing with the church. And it's always about tithe and offering. But they're not talking about sin, living a life of cleansing. And I'm not talking about every church. When I say talking about it, I'm not talking about it. I'm, I'm informing. I'm not sitting here just wanting to talk and talk and badge of the church. I'm informing. It's always something dealing with mammon. Which one is more important, you think, to God? Mammon? Are you dying and carrying your cross? Your character? Your heart? I'm not trying to throw anything off. If you're Old Testament or if you have certain things that you believe God for, do them. But don't place it on someone according to their works or their flesh. Sometimes, I would say all the time, that the Spirit has a way with people's hearts, with their giving. 
with the changing of the newborn experience. That's pretty much all I have to say, but think about it. Lamb and sheep, think about it. Sometimes people, because they're in this flesh, they have an agenda. Not all. Not all. But I, I, I will suggest that you pray. You continue to seek the Lord. So you won't follow some examples. There are some examples out there, good examples. But Jesus did talk about this ain't what Brother John said. Jesus said that. You know, beware of Pharisees and Sadducees. You might think you don't have them today. You have that spirit today. There's some things in the religious realm that people treat you unfairly. They are unfair. They are unfair. You see? Do you see? You're part of the body of Christ. And there are a lot of people in these high places that are unfair, you see. And the thing about them, they don't even, they put burdens on your shoulders. But they their self won't even care. They'll teach you everything you, you need to learn. And then as soon as you decide to do it and obey it, they'll hinder you. That is sad, you see. Sad, you see. It is a sad situation. But guess what? You have overcome it. And you will overcome it by the blood of the Lamb. I'm done. God bless y'all in Jesus' name. I'm getting out the frame. <laughs> but you all need to stop being Pharisees and Sadducees. If there's certain things and things is in you, you can learn from generations. He said, babes, babes. God will reveal some things to babes that kings and prophets won't even know of. Those that don't know that, it's in the word of God. If God has revealed something to you, if he has revealed something to you, don't you let somebody who's old and standing in their ways take it from you. Because I'm telling you, as your brother, if there's a hell, if there is a hell, which there is, throw me in it. He will reveal some things. I'm telling you the truth. He will reveal some things to you that others won't know about. There's a lot of things he's revealed to me I can't even speak about. I can't even speak about. Get out of the form. Get out of the tradition. Get out of the organizations <laughs> that put limitations to you. Or right, make a change. Stay there. Seek God for strength. And start a revolution. Start a revolution. I'm not saying to come against the church to cause all types of division in the body of Christ. But be a word carrier. Push the word. Don't just follow somebody else because you're thinking they have the word. Get in the word for yourself. You become the word. God bless you. Well, guys, you heard that. <laughs> that was pretty good. Yeah, guys, but like I said before, you know, I just want to encourage you, you know, carry your cross, deny yourself, follow things of God, listen to his voice. Don't allow religion to cloud your mind. Don't allow a religious spirit in you or anybody else to stop you from blessing somebody else. Let God have his way, okay? But like I always tell you guys, I pray that you get everything that God has for you. I pray that this word was uplifting. Like I said, it's only to inform you. This is what God gave me today, and I'm going to share it because that's who I am. Whatever God places in me, I have to be obedient and get it out because if I don't get it out, it's like, ah, oh, slow, okay? And I don't want to keep that in me. Um, so if we can help anybody anyway, I pray that it help you. I pray that it blesses you. Once again, I pray that you get everything that God has for you. I pray that you guys have a blessed day in Jesus' name. And I will see you later, guys. Bye, guys.